Can we please stand for prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gifts that are all around us. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for the proceedings that you're blessing at this time. And we pray that all of us will be encouraged and strengthened at the end of this exercise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Honorable Cranston Buffong, Minister of Agriculture, Lands, Housing, and Environment. Honorable Samuel Joseph, Minister of Communications and Works. Head of the Governor's Office, Mr. David Vincent. Members of the Munster National Trust Council. members and officials from the Ministry of Environment, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Premier, members and officials from the Ministry of Education, Dr. Mike Penkowski from, and, and Mrs. Catherine Wensink from the UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum, Dr. Quentin Broom and Sophie Mears from the Mears Botanic Garden in Belgium, Mr. David Clemens from the Species Recovery Trust, Resident Tutor, UWI, Montserrat, Principal and Staff of the Montserrat Community College, members of the Adopt a Home for Wildlife um, Committee and um, projects, other invited guests, staff, volunteers, members of the media. We all know of the saying that no man is an island, but today I want to take it further to say that history has taught us that the world of travel and technology is rapidly changing, and no person or territory has all the answers. With these continuous challenges in the world around us, nature has also taught us that everything around us is interdependent. It is with this knowledge and strategic thinking that we here at the Montserrat National Trust and all our partners, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Education, the project officers from Dorel Wildlife, and all our friends welcome you to the launch of the Monstrat History Hidden Histories Project. We are particularly pleased to welcome our partners from the United States, from Belgium, sorry, from the United Kingdom, from Belgium, and all of our supporting organizations. Mike and Catherine are no strangers to us. They've been here before. But Sophie, Quentin, and David are first-time visitors. And we are making sure that they drink from the runaway gut spring so they can come back. I would also like at this time to welcome our online participants in the project, Jody and others from the UK CEH. Rebecca from the Leeds Museum and Galleries, and other members of the team, especially Grace Castle, D Dr. Danny Joseph, Mr. Edwin Martin, Eulen Silkert Graves, Andrew Skerritt, Merle Roach. Together, we will be focusing on our human history and how this has continued to influence biodiversity in the UK Overseas Territories. This project is specifically aimed at the Cayman Islands and Montserrat. And we are exploring how the movement of people and their cultural attitudes have transformed our flora and fauna throughout the years. 
throughout the ages. In Montserrat in particular, we are looking at how our knowledge and our attitudes have influenced and are influencing the use of herbal medicinal plants. The project is supported by a consortium led by the UK Centre for Hydrology and Ecology, and it includes the Montserrat National Trust, and Mies Botanic Garden, and the Leeds Museum, and of course the UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum. We're excited to have the young people actively involved by exposing them to as, many pos as, many, as much information as possible and in spe specific areas of study such as botany, um, environmental, and cultural preservation. During this year, we hope to develop skills in oral history, scientific research, as well as collecting, documenting, and storing specimens. This is the mandate of the Montserrat National Trust, which simply states preserving the past, protecting the present, and enriching the future. As an NGO with limited resources, we are pleased and happy to work with all our partners local, regionally, and internationally to combine our resources to build and develop this beautiful island of Montserrat. Thank you very much. At this time, I would like to... <laughs> At this time, I'd like to introduce to you Mrs. Catherine Wensink of the Territories Conservation Forum, and she will give you some more details on the Hidden History Project. Mrs. Wensink. Thank you very much, Sarita. So with protocol established, I'd just like to take a moment just to look around and be grateful to be here on Montserrat again and quite a few data scientists in the room and the data for the runaway gut working I can confirm that yeah it, it definitely definitely works um, so just so grateful to be here again and to look around and see partners old and partners new and thank you all for coming to hear a little bit more about the project and maybe how you can get involved too. So the Hidden Histories Project, as you might see on some of the material, we've also um, given it a sort of working name of uh, Blue Iguana to Blue Vervain. We wanted to find something that kind of chimed, um, brought together some of the work in the Cayman Islands and Montserrat too, and, and that's kind of what we agreed on in the end. And we have that fabulous logo, which I'm, I'm sure you'll see um, throughout. So it's funded by two UK research um, uh, councils. These are the Natural Environment uh, Research Council and the Arts and Humanities Council. And we think this is pretty groundbreaking as UK Overseas Territories partners are supported financially through the project whereas work in the overseas territories has only really been funded through academic institutions thus far. So this is a cause for celebration. We're really pushing the boundaries and pushing the envelope, and there may be many more future uh, projects funded in this way by UK um, OT researchers. And uh, yeah, so we're uh, you know, setting the ground for the future, which is, is amazing. So the UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum is a, a long-term partner of the Montserrat National Trust, working alongside them for over 20 years, and it's a real joy to work with them. We've heard a short introduction, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing already and what we're aiming to do over the coming months. So there's quite a few partners in the project um, as Mrs. Francis has already talked about, from Montserrat, the Cayman Islands, Belgium, and the UK. Overall, it focuses on understanding the wildlife and surroundings of the islands of the Cayman Islands and Montserrat today, how they've been shaped by the past, and how this can inform future conservation efforts. 
Our Montserrat the Trust has long recognised that information held on Ireland, specifically about medicinal plants, is of national importance, and over time, this knowledge is being lost. As part of some of the research being conducted related to, to other projects, this is evident when being asked, what do you know about medicinal plants? Some older persons can list 10 names and say exactly how they use them and who taught them about these medicinal plants. Well, it was my grandparents, my elders, my um, elderly neighbors that taught me about it. But when you ask younger people surveyed, they simply said, I don't know anything. So now is the time to record the information in the national interest, but also international interest, without one moment to lose. By passing on this information in engaging ways, young people are inheriting a wealth of knowledge which is difficult to put a value on. Medicinal plants and growing food crops can help build up resilience to climate change, reduce costs of living, and provide more nutritious food. It goes even further as there is a growing amount of evidence from around the world that time in nature can provide benefits to well-being and to human health. The team has already created a short list of medicinal plants used on Montserrat traditionally, which is it will use to promote and celebrate throughout the project. There are many to choose from, and I know that the team found this very difficult to come up with a short list. Members of the team took part in training organized by the Leeds Museum and, and Galleries, and this was delivered by the Oral History Society. I have to say that this is one of the most interesting training programs I've been part of um, in, in, in my experience, and it was really in inspiring um, and it was telling us and teaching us how to really listen. Because as part of this project, what we will be doing is really listening. A highlight was listening to uh, voice recordings from Florence Nightingale and uh, Thomas Edison, the first sound recordings. It, that was um, pretty inspiring. The Montserrat National Trust now has all the technical equipment required to undertake oral histories. And now is the time to start listening and recording. Over the coming weeks and months, and well into the future, this can be part of the Trust's work in whatever capacity it wishes beyond the project. By preserving this knowledge of medicinal plants in a way we aren't just documenting history, but laying the foundations for the future. A future where in some ways we come full circle by greater connection to the land, nature, and all the gifts they give us. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Catherine. At this time, we're going to have a very brief introduction to Bayer Blitz. What we're trying to do is to get people on Montserrat to love wildlife and to use the technology that is at our disposal to find out more about wildlife. But I'm not going to tell you anything about it because I don't know much. So I'm going to invite Dr. Quinton Brooms and Miss Sophie Muse from the Muse Museum in Belgium to speak to you about that. Okay. Well, thank you. What a great privilege it is to be here and to talk to you about this. I feel quite humble because I don't really feel I can teach you much, but I'll, I'll do what I can. Um, so I'm Quentin Groom. This is Sophie Muse. Uh, we come from Miser Botanic Garden just north of Brussels uh, in Belgium. Um, and a BioBlitz is an event. Um, it happens on a particular day or period. Um, it happens in a particular place. But it can be an umbrella term for all sorts of different things to make what you want of it. 
On the one hand, you can get a bunch of experts together to make an inventory of biodiversity in that place at that time that can be repeated. Um, on the other hand, you can make something with the general public, which is much more about learning and engagement. And you can have a whole spectrum of things in between that. So often it's something in the middle, something where the experts and the general public get together and learn from each other um, and amongst each other. Come to the next slide. So this is an example of one we ran in Miser just in May. Well, actually, Sophie ran it. Um, it was a two-day event on Saturday and Sunday in the Botanic Garden where we have some uh, wild areas as well, and people came. Uh, we had events on. The other thing I'd like to mention on this particular slide is all of the organizations that were involved, and that's something that you can put into a BioBlitz, is getting all of different organizations involved in conservation all together, all talking to each other, all networking with each other, and the general public as well. So you can do a lot of things with a BioBlitz. The BioBlitz does all of these things. It for mo for mostly is about making an inventory of all the biodiversity in an area that can be used for science and conservation. Um, we're particularly interested in invasive species, so we're interested to see if anyone found any new invasive species that were, or things that were escaping in our botanic garden. Uh, but for a place like Montserrat, you could focus on finding completely new species. It's about public engagement and engagement of science, scientists with the general public and to learn from each other. Uh, you can have aspects of learning, particularly with children, but also scientists learning from each other. It's, it's about everyone learning from each other's experience. And it's about the promotion of organizations, so the National Trust can uh, promote itself and, and teach other people what, what uh, um, what the National Trust is about, what it does, and, and do that kind of promotion. And it's about fun. It's about, uh, without the fun, nobody's going to come along, nobody's going to come next year when it's on. You need a bit of fun uh, to, to, in the mix uh, to make uh, people think about biodiversity. Um, it shouldn't all be about dry science all the time. So when BioBlitz is started at the beginning of the millennium, um, there were no uh, smartphones. But smartphones have kind of emerged with uh, the BioBlitz concept and have very, become very much part of it. So we use iNaturalist. Uh, they're based in California, but they're really a global organization with lots of partners from different countries. And I'm not employed by iNaturalist. I just think it's a really great tool. And that you can go around out in the wild with your smartphone, take photographs of organisms. Um, that, when you get home, can be uploaded onto their website. Other people from your own community or abroad can then identify things. And if the identifications are confirmed, then the data all goes to the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, where you can use all the data and other people can use the data for conservation and research. So, oh, we chopped off the top. Um, so, we have a, the BioBlitz on Saturday. If you scan the QR code, it'll take you to the project page on iNaturalist. Uh, we have the lovely poster by Venere. Um, and if you were good at typing, you could type in that URL and get that, uh, go to the project page as well. And so I do encourage you to do that. Or just come along and go along with somebody with iNaturalist and point out things that they can record. If you go to the last slide, and also today, we have Monty's Messengers, where we're doing a sort of BioBlitz concept more uh, focused on children to get them interested in biodiversity and looking more with their eyes about what they can see. Did I cover everything? OK, thank you. Thank you, Sophie and Quentin, for that. So I encourage you to come on along on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock for our first BioBlitz here at the Trust. All is welcome to come. Um, at this time, I'm going to call on Dr. Mike Pinkowski to present uh, Catherine. Catherine is going to present a check to us on behalf. You know, we are trying to raise funds to do the children's echo play facility next door. And so UK Overseas Territory Conservation Forum has been 
soliciting funds on our behalf, and people have been giving funds so far to us. So I would like to invite now the chair of the EcoPlay Committee, Mrs. Carol Osborne, to receive a check from UK Overseas Territories Conservation Forum. I would like to just say first that as a young child, I was always taught to say please. I've had to say a lot of please help us um, around the world to try to get funding for the eco play. The other thing I was taught was thank you. And I would just like to add that it's just the first of many checks that we hope to get from the UK Overseas Territories and all the persons in the UK, as well as from persons in Montserrat and throughout the world. Thank you so much. Um, we are also pleased to have the representatives from the adopt a home for wildlife um, in large numbers are a delegation from the cork hill reunion committee as well as some other members around carol is also a member of that um, of that group of adopt a home for wildlife and so is mr castle and not so sure who else is around but at this time i'm going to ask mrs delmore ryan who is the project Office, one of the project officers on Adopt a Home for Wildlife. We launched this project last October when Mike was here. And so we want to give you an update of, about things that have been happening on this project to date. Mrs. Ryan. Thank you, Mrs. Francis, and good morning to everyone who are present here with us in person. I acknowledge the presence of our acting premier and our minister of agriculture and environment and our overseas delegates that are here and all of our educators and adopters it is, and the council. It is indeed my pleasure to give you an update on this project that has been keeping me fit and young. <laughs> That's my, my personal benefit from this project. Um, as I've shared before, it, it connected me with my childhood dreams and energy that I had exploring the mountains of Amisham and in um, Emma's Gut and all those places who remember the Town Hill areas and when I get to go to Harris's, Bobby Hole and so on. So yes, I've been around Montserrat and um, this has really brought me full circle to be doing the things that I naturally like to do. So the Adopt a Home for Wildlife um, project is very important to Montserrat's biodiversity and next slide. Its aim is really to encourage all our committees, everybody in our community to manage the, life, the wildlife in their area, whether it's in your home, in your backyard, whether it's part of your community organization, whether it's a school, whether it's a playground. And it's really about helping us to have sustainability following much of what we would have lost through the volcano on the southern part of the island. It is enriching this side of the island that we have a chance to call home. And so the program, as I mentioned, encourages food security for Montserrat. So although we speak of wildlife, it doesn't mean just letting the agoutis and the, um, <laughs> the iguanas loose all over your yard. It's finding that balance in ensuring that we can find a space for them, as well as having pollinators, all those butterflies and bees that helps with food production, really, because if the food is not pollinated, not that all foods has to um, be pollinated by um, insects, but it forms a very important part of our food security. 
It helped us to develop a more enriched biodiversity on this side of the island. And we know that the center hills is rich for that. But there are other parts of the island that there are things that we don't know of the plant species or the insect species. And we are discovering those as we move along. It encourages us to have a low impact ecotourism. And it increases our personal awareness as persons living on Montserrat, our children, and for us as adults, understanding our natural environment and connecting with our natural environment. I'm sure if I ask for a point of a raise of hand, how many of you have had a hike or taken a nature walk in the last two weeks? And you see, okay. <laughs> so it means that you can have that nature walk right in your own backyard when you take the opportunity to look at your um, fauna and your flora in your backyard and have that connectivity, not just sitting in front of the couch and doing um, TikTok and um, Facebook and all the TV stuff. So the program is funded by the Darwin Plus, which we are very appreciative of. And there was a pilot way back in 2016, 2018 to 2018, for which some of those um, persons who were in that pilot remained even though there was no any funding at that time and continue now in this project, present um, project. Uh, we have three years in front of us to bring the whole of Montserrat on board. I've pretty much expanded the scope of that project because really it is supposed to be for 10 adopters for three years, but given the demand people are, ex as we go out, they want to know what it is that we're doing, they want to be a part of it, we see that this is something that can be beneficial for the whole of the Montserrat community. And so we're taking a phase approach in implementing the adopters, going through the key things that we must um, for having this project being viable. We have those who were present previous, which was Dwayne Hickson down at the Gulf Coast area, Tim Orton, that is up as Bill Garibaldi Hill, the forest expands across that area, um, his land, I must say and we have the Corky reunion. The Lookout Primary showed an interest at that time, but their funds, the funds had run out at that time and the work of the person who was doing it on the ground, so they came forward with us in this new project. Montserrat National Trust, we have two areas that are now part of this. Uh, that's the Eco Play Park, which is right across at the end here, as well as part of the newly gifted lands that we have from the Piper's family, for which we are looking at a nature trail in that area. And we also have some residents. Now you'll recognize that the criteria spreads across the, the type of forest or the area, the environment. So we look at both the coastal dry forest, the tropical dry forest, the Mesic and the center hills, so the wet areas as well, to see what grows well and under what conditions in these areas. And these are our present adopters. It also inclu includes beekeeping. So it's not just about the plants, it's also about the fauna that is there. And so these are our active um, adopters that are listed. Next slide. Project lead, we have, you've met Mike and Catherine from the UK and Mrs. Sarita Francis from Montserrat National Trust. For the project officer, it's three of us combined. That includes myself, Ajame White, and Elvis Gerald. We have an intern, that's Antoine Sinclair. We also have a plant specialist on board, that's James Scriber Daly. We have an invertebrate specialist, that's Vicky, I don't remember, Wilkins, Vicky Wilkins, and she's in the UK. We have nursery support for which the project provides for us because we do propagate plants for the project. We have Renea, who is our project outreach PR person, and we have Vita Wade as well, who is one of those um, outreach officers. In the field work, we undertake vegetation surveys, invertebrate surveys. We provide advice to adopters as we visit their plot. And coming out of this will be a management plan that is agreed by the adopters. This is not imposed. 
You're the ones who are going to tell us how you want, what you want to treat with, with your land, have them provide the advice to you. So for example, if the plot is overtaken with invasive plants, we will point that out to you. The danger of it crowding out the opportunity for more fruitful plants or native plants to be in place. And it's for you to act, we hope, on that advice that we provide to you. The invertebrate survey allows us to have a look at our insects, the family of insects that are on Montserrat. So we undertake an insect survey for each of the, the adopters. Um, those are the plots that we are looking at. It's very exciting, and you will see just a, just a wee snapshot of um, insects. You see, I'm excited because I'm no longer afraid of insects. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't even want anybody to smash any of these insects, right? So I'm no longer afraid of insects, and I'm not, I'm not afraid of snakes and so on anymore. I'll actually take pictures of them and go close enough to them. So it builds that um, acceptance, I must say, of the, the fauna. We're not afraid of the trees except the stinging nettle, but <laughs> we are afraid of spiders, cockroaches, and all of these add value and lizards to our, our biodiversity and the food that we eat because they help to transport and do that work for us where we don't have no time to water them and provide them with nutrients. They bring that nutrients to the plant in, the, in a very different way. So it is very exciting, even for me as an adult. We do insect surveys very early in the morning, within an hour and a half of sunrise. At that time, the insects are around looking for food, so you see the bees. Are, Oh, we have so many different species of bees. You never really paid attention to them before. And do you know that we have a stingless bee? You all know that? No. You don't? <laughs> well, I can tell you that we do, and we actually have a hive right at the end of the road here where there's this big tree opposite the secondary school. So there is a, a, a honey hive there made from the stingless bees called bottle bees. So you must check it out. They won't bite you. Um, <laughs> they're harmless, right? <laughs> and then we also have, I mean, from the vegetation point of view, we will go out and we have to walk in tall grass, yes, sometimes when it's wet and all of that. And yes, the, the grass bite too, but yeah, <laughs> we go out there. And with that, we do a circumference about 10 meters around, and everything in that circumference, we record what we see to the tiniest of shrub. And then we upload that information um, to our group. And that information, we give the I am what ground coverage of that particular species of plant. We also provide the shade coverage of the large trees that are present. And it helps us to learn the classification and the categories of trees. And interestingly, there's still a lot of species that are unknown to us here in Montserrat. And in terms of the management plan, that now will come with us speaking with our adopters that these are what we found on your properties. Here is uh, a plan. This is what we're going to be helping you to look at. Tell us what it is that you would like to have in this plan as we move along. And we will come back and monitor at periodical times what, what we have seen based on the advice given, where you started in terms of pictures. So we do still photos of the GPS points that are on the lot. And then we now have that information that we upload and share. Um, the project also provides for plant propagation. So where we would have seen those invasive plants, we now have to look at what are the best replacement for those should you decide to remove or use. So for example, I'll use Cork Hill. Um, areas of land that are overtaken by the Java plum or blackberry as we know it locally. Now we're not doing anything productive with the blackberry. And Cork Hill may decide that they want to remove all or portion of that to, to replace it with something more productive in terms of growth and native plant. However, Corker may decide that they're going to use the Java plum to generate some kind of value added product. And so it no longer becomes invasive, but something productive. And that is food security. So you can have soaps and shampoos and 
candies coming from that Java plum. So the, the decision is, <laughs> is about how you plan to use it, which is what we're saying. We're not imposing, but we're telling, we're sharing with you the dangers of doing nothing and the opportunities that are before you. All right? And so in the nursery, we propagate plants, native plants, and those that we've discussed with the um, adopters, what they would like to see being replicated in their, in their, or put into their gardens. And we especially promote using our endemic species as a hedge, the preby as we call it, there's a picture above you, right ahead there, or oh, the rodentilia, boxifolia. I, I'm not good with the scientific names, I'm good with the, the short ones like preby. <laughs> and that's, that's something now that's expanding my brain to learn scientific names of the plant along with the local names of the plant. And the next part of it is of the project, we do have garden tools for loan to our doctors. So our newly acquired chipper is on hand and you'll have a chance to see it in motion as well as in relation to the power saw, very heavy duty power saw, and um, weed trimmers. There are also smaller garden tools that also can be bought by the adopters, that they have access to tools to help them with this process. In terms of our research though, we also received a wonderful microscope. So it gave us a chance to look at some of the insects much closer and be able to identify their families uh, much better. And data collection, we have been trained up and learned how to use the iNaturalist, which is part of the BioBlitz activities that will happen this week. And this helps us to share to those species of plants that we are not familiar with. Others around the world may be able to help us in identifying them. And we continue to update the Monstrat invertebrate list. So there's a list that is compiled of all the different research that was done in Montserrat and we add to that list any findings that we've, we would have discovered during our um, surveys. But most importantly, it's being continued, with, being continued with our continued with our children. And so we embark on establishing the Montserrat National Trust Monty's Messengers Children's Club with good support from the Adopt a Home for Wildlife Project to help with their continuous operations. And that, to me, is one of the most significant achievements of this project. Next slide, please. Yes. So we've gone through the cycle, pretty much, as I've mentioned. Next one. And here's just some snapshots of how we go about doing our vegetation surveys. So you're seeing pictures of us in Lawyers Mountain, the, the, the governor's residence, that's the new one and in the Tim Horton forest, as you see Scriber and Elvis with the tape. I had to make sure I get in because I'm always behind the camera. <laughs> Although I'm doing my piece, but never get a chance to say, hey, I'm here, I'm working too, okay? I do work, to, uh, you can swear for me, Ashimi, right? All right, okay, <laughs> roll on the next one. <laughs> These are some of our beautiful insect pictures that we have captured. And um, I'm being biased because that spider in the middle was my best catch. Look at its face. You see its face? <laughs> I just can't get over its face. <laughs> you will see in this picture at the bottom that this is a leaf. There are several insects. Now, the idea is not to destroy the insects, but there are ways to control the insects. So, for example, Soapy water can be used to get rid of those, but some of them are predators. And they're insects that eat those ones that are destroying the plants. So you need to know the difference of which are beneficial insects and which one are nuisance. So that is important too for your vegetation and how you plant on your lot, allowing your plants to breed. Sorry. So, use the mic. Hold it in my hand. Okay. Okay, almost finished, moving on. <laughs> so you'll see some of the insects as mentioned, and go back to that side, please. Even though you see that um, ladybug in the corner, there are different varieties, different species of ladybugs on Montserrat. We have pictures of different species 
of ladybugs on Montrat. Similarly, this stink bug, and you have, there's a nice yellow one, I'm sure you've seen it in that golden picture, the picture in the far corner. And thanks to the project officer's team, we take pictures and we're learning to improve our photography skills even as we do this project. Next slide, please. At the propagating unit, you will see some of the plants that we are propagating. So we have broom palms, we have the privy, we have um, flamboyant trees, different plants being propagated in readiness of having um, the availability to our doctors. By March, we had about 700 plants um, propagated. We do have a bit more. Um, Figures I can't give you off my head because my, my data collector is stuck overseas. That's our intern, Antoine. He keeps already data on the plants that are available to us. And so we have an idea of what's, how they're growing because it's a learning process as well for those in the propagation unit. What's the best environment for them um, in terms of whether they like the shade, whether they like the water. So when we go out, we know what works best in a dry forest condition to know what to recommend. Next slide, please. So you see some of our equipment, as mentioned earlier. This is the chipper. It's a very heavy-duty chipper. It would help us now to promote, to use back the, the material from the plants to make compost. So compost is now available to be used back in the gardens. It's not restricted to only the adopters. You can come and purchase your compost from the Monster National Trust, a very small price of $20 per bucket, per bucket. and you can get your compost um, from the trust that will help putting back the material that we are getting rid of, putting it back into the soil. So we're not wasting anything. We're using everything, every piece of the bone, as I was saying, eat the chicken, every part down to the marrow. We're using everything here, all right? And as you see, there's a lovely microscope. I mean, when you start looking at that, you don't want to get off it because you see things you've never seen with your naked eyes with the insects. And it's here for use as well because the idea is for the adopters to be able to do what we do as the project officers supporting. The process is very simple. You will know how to identify different insects. If you see something, you can capture it, bring it, come and have a look at it. Let us know if something has been introduced that may affect your area. Next slide, please. And so we have our children involved. And back in December, on the launch of the EcoPlay fundraising, we had the planting of the privy, which is our endemic um, species of plant. It is over in the EcoPlay area, so there's a hedge that they already put in. It's a slow-growing plant, so by the time the building is down, they would have a lovely hedge in place. Next slide, please. Again, on the launch of the Montes Messengers, we have about 72 persons who registered, uh, 50, 50 active ones, I would say, and this was their initiation day and they're planting the sea grapes, seaside grapes down at the, the wetlands at Old Road Bay. And we encourage the parents as well to be part of that process. Now the children will continue to meet. It will be every Saturday at the Montserrat National Trust, but they will be in groups, which mean that one group will meet twice every other um, Saturday and they will be exposed to developing skills in conservation and understanding Montserrat biodiversity. They will be part of this week's activity later today. They will have their own BioBliss session and um, they're encouraging parents and young persons to get involved in this um, group. We also need volunteers, as you see the size of the group, we will need parent volunteers or those who are interested in the environment and want to work along with the parents. Contact um, any one of us at the Montserrat National Trust. And um, I think I've reached almost the end of my presentation. And it's just for me to say thank you for listening. And I hope that you'll want to be part of the Adopt a Home for Wildlife project. <laughs> Thank you so much, Delmore, the excitement that she has. I hope it wears off on all of us in here.
All right, so um, talking about young people, we at the Trust are trying to pass the knowledge on to the young people. And so at this time, I forgot to put her in earlier on, but I'm going to ask Jodi as to come with me and just to tell us about the oral history project. I think um, Catherine did mention it, that we have equipment and we can go around and ask people in the community about the uses of medicinal plants. So Jodi as now will tell us exactly what they have been doing. We have a group of about four or five cadets. Um, there's Shamal here, there's Jodias, there's Antoine, Alicia, and, Shum and Tayshawn. And so they are involved. So Jodias will tell you what they're doing. Good morning, everyone here listening, everyone here. Um, for the Hidden Histories Project, um, the Montserrat National Trust has chosen 15 medicinal um, plants from Montserrat. Their local names were sourced, and the 15 plants chosen were researched for its benefits and the historical significance. Some were used by the first people, the Kalinago and the Lakono, as well as Europeans and Africans. We also find out whether the plants were considered invasive, which means that how harmful it would be to the plants surrounding it. And um, here, we have the chosen plants. So we have the flowering milk thistle, also known as the Mexican poppy because of its um, little seeds that it gives out. Um, we also, next slide, please. We have the Sintibaby, which is known as Sintibaby in Montserrat, um, which is the aloe plant, which is very popular because it's used mainly for burns, treatment, it helps um, any healing um, process, basically. The trumpet bush, which some people usually see when rain starts coming and they turn their leaves over for the white, um, is very sensitive to moisture. That's why it does that. Um, the dry leaves are a popular treatment for asthma, um, cough, colds, anything to do with clearing your system. That's periwinkle, known commonly in Montserrat as Dr. Dite. And it's a tea, as a mentioned here for blood pressure, diabetes, cleaning your system. Next, please. Davis root. Um, well, we don't have the root here because you'd have to pull up the plant for that, but um, these are the berries from the plant and it's used as a remedy again for asthma, diarrhea. Um, it's, uh, it's also um, used for like clearing your sinuses. Ceracy or Ponkuli, this is a popular one. It's used all around the Caribbean. Um, Jamaicans call it Ceracy. Um, we in Montserrat call it Ponkuli. And the fruits are actually edible. Some people consider it poisonous, but I should have died by now because I ate plenty of that as a kid. <laughs> um, that's the prickly pear. We don't have a fruit, but usually you would see them bear um, different um, fruits with different colors. It's edible, it's similar to the dragon fruit on the inside, same texture and such. Blue vervain. This one is a popular one, and it's also one that we have.